Hi everyone and welcome to week four of Contemporary Issues in Public Health. Today we're going to look at chronic disease and ageing and I know you've probably canvassed this a lot in your three years at university in a public health or health promotion degree. So I want to put a little bit of a contemporary spin on it and we're going to revisit it because unfortunately it's an issue that's not going to go away and it's an issue that's going to probably be a big part of your role in the public health um, industry if you're working here in Australia, possibly in the policy sector or even in um, more um, the government implementation sector. So I thought we might revisit it and just have a little bit more of a critical look at what's going on. So I know you go through a lot of these um, epidemiological figures throughout your degree, but I think it's important we revisit it because they're not changing. We know that non-communicable diseases globally and are in Australia are a continued increased public health problem. Some even say a catastrophic issue for us. And unfortunately, it's not going down and we need to start looking at why. And that's the aspect that I really want to come from about this discussion in this lecture today, is that we don't seem to be seeing the curve go down for a lot of them, and why and how we address that from a public health standpoint is really important. So let's go back to these figures, and these are the most current figures for Australia. It's from the 2016 report on Australia's health using 2014 data. Um, in Australia, big data sets mean that they're not easily analysed regularly. So 2014 data is the most current data we have to work with, even though it's a little bit out of date. But I suspect it's not a lot different to what's also going on at the moment. So we know that coronary heart disease sits up there um, still as the major player. We then are seeing this continued increase in dementia and Alzheimer's followed by vascular disease and lung cancer, and then pulmonary, um, obstructive pulmonary disease. We know it's old news and we know there's no change, and we can see that continual increase, particularly around heart disease and um, obviously diabetes and whatnot. Um, but we know that the reasons for this are often lie in the age of the population. We'll go into that a little bit more in a minute, but I also just want to show you this one and really bring home to the fact that these chronic conditions are continuing, they're increasing, and they're not going away. So we need to really look at this critically and really think about why and how to address this from a public health standpoint. So they're very much are still a contemporary issue for us and one that's going to be biggest bull in the air really for what we're going to be dealing with. And a part of that is the aging population. Okay, so we know that as from an aging population perspective, chronic diseases are going to increase. As the population increases, we're going to have increased rates of chronic disease. Now I want to look at this a little bit more. Um, so as we know, as we can see from this very succinct infographic that it's that very inverted pyramid. There is a lot more people sitting at the top than there are being born. So we know that increased rates of, ins of chronic conditions are tied to an aging population. And we know that that's because from about 65 onwards, we start to see a reduced um, Biologically, we see a reduced reduction in our um, cells and, and things start to age and compounding that starts to be the issue of chronic diseases. You can have that period when you're young um, that you have free of health, uh, you know, a good health, a good condition. And then as you sort of tip that iceberg at 65, that you really start to see the um, impact of aging and disease. However, what the issue is, is that we're starting to see that creep forward, okay? That 65 benchmark is starting to creep forward. And we're gonna go into that a little bit more in a minute. 
you can see here, the direct correlation between um, these chronic conditions and that lip in terms of where the um, peak of cancer, cardiovascular disease really is um, tied to that aging population. However, it's a little bit of chicken and the egg. We know that these manifest as you age, biologically we know that we're living longer, so we're experiencing higher rates of these chronic conditions. So is it that aging phenomenon or is it the way we're aging that is causing these high rates of chronic diseases? Is it how we're behaving our health choices earlier in life? Are resulting in these increased diseases or is it just simply biologically because we're aging? A little bit of a chicken and egg scenario here. We know that an aging, in the purest sense, an aging population is not a cost to our healthcare system. If everyone was healthy, functional, not experiencing disease and disability, they would not be a drain on our health care system. The issue is we're aging with chronic conditions. And again, it comes back to that chicken and egg, what comes first. But the fact is, as an aging population, we're aging with disease and that's where it becomes a catastrophic and what will continue to be a catastrophic burden on our healthcare system unless there's a, a major public health response or, or policies in place that really start to see that curve go down, that trend chronic disease and a correlation of chronic disease and age go up, we need to see a cross of the chronic disease to come down while the ageing is going up for it to be so sustainable for us in the future. The other thing is that the tide is turning. It's not just a correlation of those two curves going up, age and um, chronic conditions we're actually seeing a bit of an inverted U. So we're also seeing that it's not just an issue for over 65 with chronic condition and disability and death. We're looking at rates of chronic conditions really starting to rise from early adolescence, from 20 years. What used to be an aging phenomenon is now a fact of everyday life and it's causing huge rates of premature death. And as you know, from a public health standpoint, this is a major issue. So you can see here that in terms of healthcare expenditure, there's several blips within. It's not just a simple upward trajectory. You can see that there's an increase around 20 to 25, okay? And also, again, that the, the peak starts to really start to rise around 40, 45. So we're not just seeing optimal health what used to be considered optimal health in our youth, we're sitting, seeing this as a correlation with chronic disease, disability, and drain on the healthcare system much earlier on. And from a public health standpoint, that is a major concern. That is a major issue that we really need to start to get on top of. Again, this is looking at, like I said, that disability and that and that burden um, but it's looking at obesity and overweight with age and we can really see it starting to creep in um, in those earlier years not just in the later years so where is it all going wrong is fat the new normal is that the issue we've normalized these unhealthy conditions to be par for the course and as public health practitioners, how has that happened? Where has our policy gone wrong? Where has our take on this for the last 20 years when we really needed to start to get on top of this and change that phenomenon that fat is the new normal? Where have we gone wrong? So we know that chronic conditions occur because of underlying risk factors, okay? And we know that if you have a series or in particular one major risk factor such as obesity, your rate of acquisition of a chronic condition is far worse. So we really need to start from a public health perspective, looking at where we're missing the ballpark in getting on top of these risk factors, okay? And one of those is obesity. 
it continues to rise, okay? There's been a lot of individual perspective put into this and it continues to rise. We're now looking at two in three people are overweight or obese. 70% of the health burden in Australia is due to overweight and obesity, okay? 63% is, um, was due to, uh, a fatal burden was due to obesity rather than non-fatal burden, okay? So we're, we're looking at well over 50% of the population are experiencing this. 83% were, um, were overweight between the ages of 45 to 84. You think about that, 84% of the population. That's a vast majority of the population. And if we then put that with that aging population, we have a big issue. We have a big problem for us. And we also know that males experience a bigger burden of disease or a bigger burden of overweight and obesity. And again, this starts to tie into those chronic conditions, okay? So obesity is that risk factor, that precursor to so much of what is considered to be burden of disease that we just looked at in terms of diabetes, osteoarthritis, all tying back to overweight and obesity. I think this is a really interesting graph because it looks at the fact, it looks at Australia compared to the OECD countries, all those other um, developed countries. And it really looks at the fact that we are in the worst third for overweight and obesity um, within when benchmarked against these other countries, okay? We're not getting on top of our obesity and it's devastating effect on our, our, our outcomes, our chronic disease outcomes, okay? Particularly also in children and girls. Again, this is another chart showing us that overweight is directly attributed to these chronic conditions, okay? And then just what devastating effect. So we have that number one risk factor. We're not getting on top of it from a public health perspective and it's leading to these chronic conditions. And a big part of that is childhood obesity. Look at these alarming rates, okay? Look at these figures of 12 to 15 year olds, you know, over 25, over a quarter of a percent of the population of 12 to 15 year olds are either overweight or obese. And it's continuing, that curve is going upwards. And it's not just in, it's not just globally for developing countries, it's not just in non-developing countries, it's not just Australia, it's an issue for us here in Western Sydney, okay? We know that one person is diagnosed in New South Wales every five minutes, and in particular, Southwest Sydney has one of the highest prevalence rates of diabetes in New South Wales. We also know that it is in the six of the 10 top postcards, postcodes, sorry, um, ranked for um, gestational diabetes, okay? So we're not looking at older people with type two diabetes, we're looking at younger mothers with gestational diabetes, okay? That's got huge knock on effect in terms of um, weight gain in pregnancy, weight gain for the child, and then weight gain for the, that child in their first early years of their life. There's great body of science behind that connection and then those long-term health chronic conditions. Um, oh, we already said that. And then 14% of all babies in the last two years are born to a mother with gestational diabetes when compared to only 5.5 to 8% across Australia. We really have an issue here within South West Sydney in terms of gestational diabetes and the health outcomes of those. We also know that one in four hospital patients in Campbelltown has diabetes. Again, thinking about those chronic conditions and those risk factors and how that relates to us right here in our backyard. So the question I wanna to put to you, you're the future, you're the next lot of graduates in public health, where to from here? How do we address this? How do we start to actually curtail this increase? How do we start turning the tide and making a reduction in these risk factors, in these chronic conditions, for us to then sustain over the next 10, 20, 50 years that we need to, for, from a policy and public 
health sustainability point of view.